I want to start. You leave Harvard. Graduate of Harvard. You leave Harvard. You wind up back in Dallas. Mm -hmm. Depressed. Mm -hmm. On food stamps and welfare. How does a Harvard graduate wind up in that situation? The economy, you know, and sadly to say, um, it's probably going to be the exact same reality for many people right now um, with this whole pandemic. And so it's just in a matter of, you know, a few minutes, your life can really change. And um, the stock market crashed and I found myself without a job, um, not many options and nobody was really hiring and I had to move back home, no source of income. So you do what you do. And so um, I'm not too proud to go ahead and ask for help. So, you know, if I needed it, I wasn't going to be a burden on my parents and my parents couldn't really afford that either. So that's what you have to just do, you know. So you do what you do, you make it work. I think that um, if there's anything that we know is just that, you know, I'm not, we're not, um, that's not new to us, figuring out ways to make things work, especially in a resource limited environment. What you major in at Harvard? I did strategic management and political advocacy. I had this idea that I wanted to go into politics and help to change the world and do something significant um, and got my little taste of it um, and realized that really wasn't for me. <laughs> you know, I always believe when people are at their worst times, that's when they find their purpose. Like that's when their purpose tends to present itself to them. In mm -hmm. your case, and you know, I've read that you battled depression. Yeah. Um, so I got to believe that during this dark period of, um, for you, the depression's kicking in heavy. Yeah. Is this where you found your life's purpose? You know, that's an interesting question. I never thought of it like that. I, cause I kind of feel like passion sometimes can just always be with us. Mm -hmm. And it, all right, it just depends on the circumstances, whether or not we can actually listen to that passion or just kind of fall into that passion or whatnot. And my circumstances were, you know, were such that, at the time, yes, I was depressed heavily. I had finally gotten a job, but I just was not really in love with it. I was gaining all this weight. And so my circumstances for me, um, you know, made me realize that I've got to go ahead and prioritize my health a lot more. I was on medication because of the depression. I didn't like the way that, that made me feel. It would mess with my like libido and all that kind of stuff. So I was like, if I can just feel better about Kevin, maybe this, this can really go away. And I wasn't trying to do what I was doing right now. I wasn't trying to start up Fit Men Cook. I wasn't trying to start up a community. I was really just trying to save my diet and save my life. Now, what I found out in the purpose of, um, you know, uh, using my social media in this way is that one of my biggest criticisms when I was working in corporate America is that I didn't feel connected to the value that I was creating in the world, that I was, you know, that I didn't feel like I actually mattered. Um, because, you know, you do all this stuff and people just keep getting richer and richer and you just, you stay in your own thing. And what happened when I was doing the community, I'm fast forwarding now and I started to share my recipes online is that I would share a recipe and have someone in another country email me in like an hour and say, I tried this recipe. It, it, um, you know, it was amazing. Thanks so much for it. And all of a sudden I felt like, oh, that was kind of cool. And then I got a message from somebody else saying, hey, I've lost 10 pounds this month just by eating this stuff that you were doing. And then all of a sudden, I feel like I actually mattered a lot more. And so that kind of awakened this idea and this passion inside of me. And so I just fell much more in love with cooking and healthy living and helping other people to embrace that, that that's how I discovered it. One thing I tell people, um, and this is so true, whenever you're looking for your passion, I've always found out that your passion is always there, but do what keeps you up at night. That very thing that you just can't shake, that you just really love to do, that keeps you motivated, that you just love, do that. Oftentimes we turn that off because that's not paying the bills. We turn it off because somebody said that that's not the right thing to go ahead and do. We turn it off because perhaps our immediate circle of friends or family isn't really supportive of that. But that's the very thing, though, that can lead to a life of happiness. Oh, I love that, Kevin. I think that's such a gem for everybody. Do what keeps you up at night. That's great. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you.
If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.